Hey everyone, this is Mike Kownowski with the InfoOS product management team, and we're going to be talking about how to lift and shift data from on-prem systems into a big data platform like the Infor Data Lake. Before we get started, like and subscribe to the channel and the video, help us get to know what kind of content that you want to see, and also be notified whenever we upload new content to the channel as well. So let's go ahead and set the table, and before we jump into some software, let's get a better uh, handle around what is it that the Data Lake provides to SaaS-based enterprises today, and how they can complement traditional data warehousing strategies that address the needs for curated data models for driving BI analytics and reporting. Now, especially nowadays with applications, users, IoT devices, and APIs generating all sorts of information, some of which may be captured into data warehouses, a lot of that information is left on the cutting room floor and perhaps isn't considered actionable, at least at the time of generation. But oftentimes, that data does present some sort of value down, uh, downstream to other applications or data consumers, even if you haven't necessarily identified a potential use case for that information today. And so data lakes provide you with that capability to store structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data types to begin storing that data for near virtually infinite amount of time uh, on, the, on the knowledge that perhaps this information might be usable for the system or the applications sometime in the future. Now, what's also very powerful about this is that you're no longer beholden to having to transform or really manage that data before you actually start wanting to operationalize or action on that information. So that gives you that flexibility to start capturing all this information while reducing a lot of the overhead in terms of data management and, and content curation before you're able to start even really utilizing this information for different types of use cases over here. Now, because it's based off of object-based storage, this also introduces a, uh, a novelty in that you're able to start capturing enormous volumes of information without necessarily having to worry about the cost associated with traditional data warehousing type approaches. And so while that may have been uh, prohibitively expensive to consider capturing within traditional database or relational systems, for analysis sometime in the future, data lakes are premised on the fact that it's very cheap and it makes a lot of sense to capture more and more of this information into a big data platform because eventually that data will present some sort of use to the uh, to different uh, or a variety of different audiences. And that might include data scientists, as well as traditional content curators, BI developers, report writers, and even functional users that might just want to uh, address some self-service ad hoc discovery functionality. It really is about operationalizing potential energy of the information. And when you look at the different kinds of information that the business is generating, nearly 90% of it being non-relational information like PDFs, for example, then being able to store and then further analyze that data and start asking of the uh, questions of that information in the future becomes very powerful. And so very often you'll hear about ELT type philosophies or approaches towards data modeling and data management. And so using cloud-based big data platforms allows you to very cheaply and economically store that information, but still provide you with familiar SQL and relational interfaces to extract information and knowledge from the data that you're actually capturing to that big data platform. Now you're able to do this with a suite and an ensemble of Infor OS capabilities, not the least of which is the Infor Ion integration platform, as well as our Infor Ion API gateway that allows you to connect to virtually any kind of system or application. That might be the Infor cloud, as well as on-prem systems, whether it be legacy or even operational systems that you have inside of your network. And so you're able to connect to these systems and then use a party of different capabilities, including lineage tools, history, auditing, and security frameworks to better manage the scope and the movement of information that's traversing your, uh, your enterprise and your ecosystem at any one time, as well as drive the need for data to be published to data-hungry applications. Typically, that's uh, analytics with something like Burst and the InforBurst platform, but that could also be extending and reusing that data to drive novel types of insights using predictive technologies, the likes of the InforColeman AI platform. 
but it's really about not just storing that data at scale, it's about being able to ask questions of it, and especially being able to reuse that knowledge that the business has developed over decades of experience with relational systems, and being able to layer on this compute layer on top of storage, and use traditional SQL approaches to extract information and insights into the data now that you've conglomerated all that information into a single big data storage uh, platform. So let's go ahead and jump right into InforOS and navigate over to the InforION desk application. So we've already taken the liberty of configuring the ION Enterprise connector inside of our network so that we can actually connect to our on-prem database and, and actually start modeling a data extraction using the AnySQL tool. So we'll go ahead and jump into our connect model over here. And what we're able to do with AnySQL, very importantly, is uh, start exploring the data inside of our tables here to get a better sense and understanding of, is this information that we find valuable that we want to extract from this system and then move that into the data lake so that we can actually start exploring that data with other types of business applications or interfaces over here. Now, in this particular scenario, I want to grab this invoice table and start creating our model around this. And very quickly, we can start selecting what columns of information we want to capture from our system. Now, we want to capture the entirety of the data stored within this table so that we always have that available at our fingertips that we can always use for different types of reporting and analysis downstream. And we have that positive feedback loop here that we can constantly check on how our model is being developed over the course and the life cycle of that model as well. Now, without having to write any sort of SQL, any SQL does all that hard work for us just through uh, graphical drag and drop tools and modeling experiences. Now, I want to avoid generating duplicate data inside of the data lake, so we can also configure incremental keys to prevent duplicate loading of information that we've already connected to and extracted from the system. So in this case, we'll go ahead and set up an incremental key just to pull in any new data since the last time that we've actually ran the model. And then we'll go ahead and save our AnySQL model here. And we can see that we've given this a document name of migrated invoices. So I'm going to go ahead and tell Ion, let's go ahead and register this metadata model within the data catalog. Let's take a look at that data dictionary that we've just generated right here. So we can see our new metadata model, uh, migrated invoices. And we have a list of all of our file properties that are associated with this AnySQL model. Now, any SQL, when we actually move this into the cloud, is going to produce files and information that's been extracted from a system. Now, this could be also used for moving data from file servers, from JMS queues, from APIs, and so on. But we always have the data catalog helping us better understand what does our data look like, and then later on down the road, how can we actually start extracting value from the files that we're storing inside of the data lake? Well, we've gone ahead and registered our model here. Let's go and move some data into the data lake. Now, we've already started the beginnings of our data lake flow. All we need to do to complete this is drag and drop our database activity here, select the connection point that we want to pull our data from, and then simply describe the movement of data from one system over to the data lake. Now, as soon as I save and activate this model, Ion puts AnySQL on a schedule to start extracting information from the system. Now, in this case, this is a legacy database, so we really only expect one copy of the entirety of that table to be moved up and into the cloud. And we can also use Ion One View to monitor that process to see what's in flight and what types of business transactions have actually been uh, uh, traversing the enterprise bus. And in this case, we can see that we've already moved our migrated invoices table, and we have a complete timeline of events. Everything from our connection point being connected to by Ion to the movement of data into the data lake over here. And what's extremely valuable is we can even take a look at the file that AnySQL generated. And so if we needed to do any sort of troubleshooting or an understanding of the data that moved between systems, we actually do have that ability to peek into the message contents themselves. So how can we start thinking about how to actually operationalize and start asking questions of this data? Well, we can navigate over to the Data Lake's Compass-based browser editor and actually filter for our new migrated invoices table over here. Now, we see based on that data catalog definition that we have all of our billing information and invoice details available for us. 
and we can actually quickly generate this SQL statement without actually having to write any sort of code whatsoever. Now you could write arbitrarily complex SQL code, but very quickly you're able to lift and shift that data up into the data lake and start asking the questions of the data using traditional relational interfaces and capabilities to drive insights into the data and start prototyping this information. Now very quickly, we're able to take this query that we just generated against our migrated invoices table, and then we can use other tools like the Compass JDBC driver to enable developers to start asking questions directly through outside experiences and applications as well. And so this is not limited to just that browser-based interface, but really enabling other applications, other users, and other capabilities within your enterprise to start leveraging the capabilities of the big data strategy that you're employing with something like the Infor Data Lake. And really that's how easy it is to lift and shift that data up into the cloud using tools within Infor Ion like the Enterprise Connector and NeSQL to start conglomerating and centralizing that data uh, so it can be exposed to a variety of different interfaces out there. Now for more information and more tutorials, be sure to like and subscribe to this video and this channel, as well as visiting our community forums at community.info.com.